enter today in the name of Jesus Christ. You enter another realm altogether where your supply will be more than your demand in the name of Jesus Christ. Go beyond the confines of life and see scripture fulfilled in your life by experiencing the epitome of knowledge from the custodian of God's sacred. This is your moment of spiritual enlightenment right here on Rest TV. Some of you will walk out with Elijah in hand so that the heavens remain open over your life. That will be your testimony after today in the name of Jesus. desires to speak one-on-one -on -one full direction instruction or spiritual guidance icon charge is the place open every day monday to friday 5 p.m sunday 9 a.m to 1 p.m catered in chirica kamuli road opposite mogas petro station and more information concerning icon church please reach us on plus two five six seven zero three seven nine two one eight five may the lord open up the floodgates of heaven over you that every day you may have reason to celebrate him in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, henceforth, we regard no man according to the flesh. So this is just flesh. And these are just clothes. We see what is inside of you. We see the saints. We see the prophets. We see the billionaires. Hallelujah. May my God grant you seeing eyes speak about this thing all the time because according to this kingdom it is the most important thing our ability to see things that others cannot see separates our outcomes our ability to align ourselves to things that people think are foolish determines the results that we have people will not understand why you're seated here because others have other important things to do. But it is because your eyes have been able to see something that those people are unable to see. And that in itself gives you different results. And I promise you that before we finish this ministration today, you will have different results in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to speak to you about eyes that see. So that by the time we are done, your eyes can see the gold that the Lord has already released for you. That is my prayer. Just lift up your hands and pray with me. Father, grant me the opportunity to see the gold that you have released for me in this season. In Jesus' name. Amen. Touch somebody. Say, today, your eyes shall see the gold that the Lord has released for you in the name of Jesus. And if your eyes are unable to see the gold, I will make sure that your eyes see before the end of this service. That is the reason I am here. I need you to follow me a little bit and then I'll bring you back to that place that the Lord has told us, uh, uh, ha ha has in store for us, the place where I want you to receive what the Lord has set on his heart to give us today. Just follow me. One, two, three, go. Can we read? I want you to participate. I mean, at this, all of our football match, you people participate more than the players. Let's participate. One, two, three, go. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. This is the mandate of the prophet. Let us read it again. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. I need you to focus on me a little bit. When the Lord encounters Jeremiah, Jeremiah is the prophet here. This is his encounter with the Lord. When the Lord encounters Jeremiah, he encounters Jeremiah for a purpose. Focus on me. God will never call you without a purpose in mind. So if you're seated here and you don't yet know the purpose, just know 
that the thing that you think has brought you is not the purpose. He has a purpose. He has a purpose. When he calls Saul, so it, for, for Saul, before Saul encounters Samuel, he thinks that he's looking for donkeys. But in the mind of the prophet, the Lord has already said there is a king inside this man, you see. So when that man comes, I don't want you to focus on the donkeys. I want you to focus on anointing the man that you see. I need somebody to see. He tells the prophet, when that man comes to you, I want you to anoint what you see. He doesn't anoint the man depending on what the man wants. He's not giving him empowerment to deal with his problems. He's anointing the inside man, the inner man, so that that man can manifest the truth or the purpose of God over that man's life. So every time you encounter God, the, only, the first thing he's going to give you is purpose. Someone say purpose. And it is out of that purpose that you will get direction and out of that purpose that you will get guidance. I've told you before, and we don't need to go back, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, famous scripture we talk about, and I think we just get excited about it. The Bible says, but I know the thoughts I think toward you, or I have the plans. I know the plan I have toward you. That plan is not your physical plan. It's not a physical plan. It is not for your body. It is for the inner man. It is for the man that the Lord wants to manifest. So when you encounter God, yes, the problem is a physical problem. You might have a rent issue. You might have a travel issue. You, know, you might have a, a disease issue, sickness, whatever it can be. But the reason, the only reason that the Lord uses that situation to bring you before a prophet is so that you can be anointed for the thing that you are supposed to be. There is something beyond what it is that has brought you. He wants that the man that is on the east side, the man that he has purposed toward is that man that is anointed by the prophet. That is why, focus on me a little bit. I'm digressing a little so that I can come back here. Look, this encounter, First Samuel chapter 9, this encounter, God speaks, look, God speaks to Samuel, who is the prophet, and does not tell Samuel about the donkeys. I want you to focus on me. He doesn't tell Samuel about the donkeys because donkeys don't matter. Touch your neighbor say, the business does not matter. The prophet in you matters. I want to move you to some other place. According to God's design, he looks at a man and the thing that matters, the thing that is going to move this man from this position of I want rent, I want bills, I want what, I want what. The thing that is going to move you from that place is the manifestation of the man that you are supposed to be. So when he speaks to the prophet, he says, the man you will see tomorrow afternoon is a king. So before you encounter the prophet, what the prophet has received as a blueprint is the plan of God over your life. Not your current problem. Even if they see your current problem, it is much bigger than your current problem. So the Lord's purpose is what prevails. So when you encounter the prophet, the thing that they saw in the spirit that you were supposed to be is the thing that they are going to give you direction and purpose over. So when Samuel, when Saul encounters Samuel, Samuel does not know what, the, what, what about the donkeys. Do you see? Have you read that scripture? It is Saul that even reminds Samuel that what about the donkeys? Just like many people have. And then we talk about or the person says, oh, I have rent issues and I have this and I have this. And I say, okay, fine. The Lord wants you to minister. He says, yes. He encountered you uh, many times through dreams. The person says, yes, this is the thing you must do. And the person will say, now what about rent? What about neighbor? Mugambe rent, ajakuja, ngatumaze papa siyamukama. If you remember the way that that scripture is, it is Saul that is reminding the prophet, what about rent? Because 
the purpose of God is the gateway into the abundance that you are looking for. When the, uh, when the purpose of God is aligned and fulfilled, all these other things that you see as problems will not be problems anymore. It is that one thing that God wants you to do. That if it is done, everything else will fall in place. I hope you realize that for some of you, you will never have come to this church. And you would never have encountered Prophet Dawn unless there was a problem. There are people who say, I've been keeping your number for, two, for one year until I got a problem. First, first, first look at me. So that means if the problem never came, they would never have the opportunity to encounter purpose. Not encounter Prophet Dawn, encounter purpose. Because the thing that the Lord keeps with the prophet is the direction of a man's life. They are destiny. That is the thing that the Lord keeps with a prophet. Take me back to that scripture. So when God encounters Jeremiah, he says to Jeremiah, this is what I want you to accomplish. This is what I've, I've done with you. I have set you over nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to plant, to destroy and to throw down. That is, that is the purpose. Someone say purpose. And whisper to your neighbor, say, do you have purpose? Do you know? Do you know? Look, he comes to an ordinary man and says, I have made you, I've set you over nations. An ordinary man. The way God can actually come to you and say, I have given you uh, authority or power over the entire world. Ordinary man. Now, this is a problem, which is what I want us to discuss. Next verse. After the Lord has encounter with Jeremiah, he says, after God has given him purpose, after God has given him the word for the season, whisper to somebody, say, gold, gold, gold. Whisper it many times, many times, many times. Are you saying God or gold? Gold. The English is superb. Amen. So after he has given him the plan, someone said the purpose. Let me bring you back. We are using Jeremiah as the example. But that is the same purpose. That means God has a purpose for this season. Are you with me? That purpose that is there... God was giving Jeremiah purpose over his life. But God has a purpose for you in this season. He has a purpose to open up gold doors to you. God, I pray somebody's here. He has a purpose over your life. Whatever it is you are going to receive in this season shall be gold standard. Do I have a man in the house? Your wedding shall be gold standard. Your promotion shall be gold standard. Your job that has taken a long time coming, when it comes in this season, it shall be gold standard. That is the purpose for the season. Do you understand? If you have understood the way that the spirit of the Lord works or the spiritual realm works, you know that God is not doing everything at, at, at all the time. God is not doing everything all the time. I can guarantee you. He's never doing everything at the same time. He tells us that as we see the farmers do, that is the same way it happens. That means there is always a season to everything. And this season is gold season. Oh, whisper to somebody, say this season is gold season for me. If they don't want it, take it double in the name of Jesus. There is a purpose for this season. God is trying to tell you that even if throughout the entire years, the entire months, you have not seen the answer, I am bringing you to a place where everywhere you will see and everywhere you will walk, it will be God. He's talking about a season. Now this is the problem. After God Re releases his purpose to Jeremiah. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me. Say, can we read that part together? Don't read Jeremiah. 
you have a name. You say Michelle. Now you are going to say Michelle. Okay, let us read together. One, two, three, go. What seest thou? Ask yourself again. Is this, is this KJV language too difficult for you? Can we change it? What do you see? After he has given you the plan for the season, he comes back to you and says, what do you see? Because the results of that word can only come after you have seen the reality of what it is he said unto you. The manifestation of that word can only arrive after you have seen clearly what it is he wants you to see. So today God is asking you, have you seen the gold? Have you seen the gold? Because if you haven't seen the gold, there is no way you're going to touch the gold. You are going to have to see the gold first before you can touch the gold. If you've not yet seen the gold in the spirit, there is no way you're going to touch it. As a golden rule in the kingdom, you know that there is nothing that you can touch that you have not already touched in the spirit. Golden rule. So if you say that I am a winner, you are not just saying I am a winner. If it is true in the spirit, in the natural, you must win. If you say that I'm walking on the streets of God, it is not just a coined word. It is in scripture. But until you see the reality of it in the spirit, you can never touch it. So today God is asking you, what seest thou? What do you see? If you see God, you are going to receive God. That is the biggest question. And the Bible says, I want to show you something. The Bible says that Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me. This is Jeremiah. And the Lord asked him, what do you see? According to the word I gave you, what do you see? Not according to what you think. Not according to what your colleagues have told you. Not according to your situation. Focus on me. Ngambira neighbor, you might look at your house and it doesn't look like God. God is not asking you to look at your house. He's asking you to look at his word. He's asking you to get hold of his word. That is the word that he is going to manifest the thing you're looking for. So if your confession or your profession is still according to what you see, you are very far from what we are talking about. He's trying to give you understanding. There is a way of the spirit. And the way of the spirit differs 100% from the natural. In the natural, let me give you a quick secret. Everything that is the way it is in the natural is the opposite in the spirit. Five senses. You have your senses. So if your senses say, say luck, your natural senses, if they say luck, the opposite of it is the spirit. And that means there is abundance. If you ever encounter poverty, you ever encounter a failure, just know that the same is already planted in your spirit. And what the Lord has done is that he has helped us understand that we don't move by the things we see. We move by the things we don't see. So if I see failure, ah, in my spirit I'm saying success has arrived. Because if I can see it in the spirit, then I can grab it in the natural. If I walk by what I see, I will never see the reality of the spirit come to me. So if you're looking at your wallet and the size of your wallet and you are saying, ah, now there is 50K, now there is 30K. If that is how you're thinking, you're very far from where gold is. Very far. So when God is asking Jeremiah, what do you see? He's trying to move him to a place where he sees himself set above the nations of the world. Set above every limitation. Are you already there? 
the Lord has already spoken to us, says we are going to walk on streets of God. If God is the standard, that means he has made a man higher and more valuable than God. So God cannot be containing me. It cannot control me. I am supposed to control money. I hope I have a man in this house. If I'm saying that I am walking on the streets of God, then I must have already understood that this is not a thing that is a physical thing. But then in the reality that it has in the spirit, I can download it and create streets of God in the reality. It comes from what it is you are able to see. Listen to me. When God asks Jeremiah, what do you see? He's asking him to check according to the word he gave him. He's not asking him to check according to the state of his kitchen. You know, he's not asking you. He's not saying, what do you see? I don't know what you had for lunch. If you had matoke and what, I don't know. Okalo, steamed kalo. <laughs> Some words in my mouth make me laugh. Steamed kalo. Someone said, that they are, they are craving steamed kalo and uh, fish over roast. <laughs> Amina. Whatever that is. No, ya to alina nyena we alavi kachayagala. So, if this is what you had for lunch, when God comes to you and he says, what do you see? It can be that you see what you had for lunch. Hmm means, look, that means that that is your measure of what it is your life is. Like you are measuring your life with you are measuring your life by food. Ask your neighbor again, what did you have for lunch? Someone can tell you that my life is bad because of what I had for lunch. Ask your neighbor again, what did you have for lunch? Like, uh, at least if I had burger and uh, fries, maybe and what, life would be good. That means that you are measuring the results of God by lunch, lunch, food. That is exactly what the Lord is saying when he says, what do you see? He's checking with Jeremiah to see if he has already aligned himself with the word that he gave him. Because only that alignment can produce different results in his life. He wants to move a man from measuring themselves by what it is they ate and how it is they dress to measuring themselves by the word that the Lord has said. So when we walk like we own this world, we are not owning because we have an army. We are owning because we belong to the army of the Lord. We are owning it because the entire host of heaven is on our side. When you see me, you see one person. But if the Lord would open your eyes, this entire place is full of an army. So when I walk like I own the world, I am not walking to brag or to show off. I am walking because of a reality that I know in the spirit. It is a reality. Until you get yourself to the place where the reality that controls your life is the word of the Lord. You are not anywhere near receiving its results. That is a difference when we come into the kingdom of God. He's telling Jeremiah, what do you see? And for me, the most important thing here is that God is checking. Are you already at the place where you see? So that I can follow my word to fulfill it. Oh, this is the best part for me. In other words, God gives you a word and says, I'm going to give you a job before the week ends. And he's, for, he's checking. He keeps checking. Have you aligned yourself to that word? And you are still saying, by the standard of my kitchen. Let me not go to kitchen. Because maybe the self-confused house has no kitchen. Uh -huh. By the standard of my lunch. I don't see gold. And you shake your head like this. By the standard. 
you know, because we've not understood what God is saying, we think that there is going to be magic. Like God is going to be. And then when you open up your eyes, it's going to happen like that. It can only happen like that when your mind is aligned to his words. When it happens, let me tell you, that thing is like a collision. The minute that you pick up the reality of the word in your spirit, you will not know how the door opens. The door will open. You will be wondering how it is that people that you have not met in 10 years, that you have not called them, you don't have their number. How did they get your number? How did they come back to you? You will be wondering how it happened because the collision happened in the spirit. He tells Jeremiah, well, what do you see? Because he's trying to gauge. Someone say measure. He's trying to measure. Are you already aligned to the word I gave you that I may produce its results? Are you hearing me? Oh, my Yasata. Ah, now you are saying, I am waiting for my golden wedding. Are you already aligned to this golden wedding that the Lord may produce the results? That is the question. It is not a matter of getting excited. It is a matter of aligning yourself. Touch your neighbor say, I breathe gold. I speak gold. I think gold. I walk gold. That should be the level. When you touch it, you are going to see the results of it. That should be the thing. There is a man saying, I've received this word. And now I am thinking of a gold wedding. And then you ask the person. And then the person, the same person who is saying, I'm thinking of a gold wedding. He's saying, ha, Naomi Sajja. But before God actually gave you the word, he knew that there must be a man in this equation. He knew. So there is no way he can miss it. Who are you going to marry if the man is not there? He can't miss it. But that means, look at me, it means that instead of aligning yourself to the word God gave you, you are aligning yourself to the reality of if there is a man or no man. So that is why we come to God and we are like, God, you have done this, but touch your neighbor, say every time you think about but, you have moved out of faith. Every time there is a but, you have moved out of faith. Faith believes forever. It is a state. You live in it. Whether you see, whether you don't see. Someone cannot say, I believe. And then they say, but I have been believing. What a neighbor. Just don't say anything. Say, but I've been believing. If you have been believing, that means you are essentially saying, I stopped believing at a certain time. And because you stopped, then you are never believing. Because it is a state. It is a state that you hold yourself accountable to. Whether you see, whether you don't see. That is why the Bible speaks about Abraham and says, he considered not. It is a blockage. I have put a wall here. There is no day God is going to fail me. If he says God is coming, God is coming day and night. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I don't see. There is a wall here that is saying, Regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, regardless of what I experience, God is here and I'm going to receive it. That is the reality. And the scripture says, what seest thou? First ask your neighbor, what do you see? Oh my God, what do you see? Don't just say gold. Some of you might be seeing evening tea, I don't know. Don't just say gold. Some of you might be see now you some of some of us uh, we are congregated here but some of some people might be thinking about their dinner I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner And then the state of your dinner is what will determine if it is gold season or not gold season Do you see that The things that you are looking at as rent issue, what issue, what issue, they determine what it is that you see instead of what the word of the Lord gave you. 
So when God gives you a word, his intention is this. Look at me. The word that God will give you will always contradict your physical situation. Always. He will find a man who has no eyes and say, you see. Not open the eyes. He says, you see. And then the man is saying, now how do I see? You have read that scripture where the Bible says that he got mad on a man who is blind and then he got mad. He spit. He made mad. He put the mud and then put him here. Put on his eyes. Oh, uh, I don't know if you understand me. The man is blind. To cover the blind eyes. And then he tells the same man, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So if you are thinking about it, how in the world does the man go? Already he couldn't go. How is he going? He's double blind now. The other time he was blind. Now he's double blind. And the man is telling him, now we go. Unless the man had understood something in the spirit, he would have missed his miracle. That is exactly what the Lord is talking to us. That you can receive the word that is supposed to open your eyes to the gold season that you are in. And then you look at food and food blinds you. Then you look at money and money blinds you. Then you look at school fees and the school fees blind you. Then it kills the original word that is supposed to open the doors for you to receive the answer. Same thing he's talking about. So when God says to Jeremiah, what do you see? He's looking for a connection. Oh, the way I'm looking for a connection today. I am looking for a man who is aligned to the word of the Lord. You receive your gateway today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your feet shall step into something new. I guarantee you, God is looking. Let me show you the third part. Give me that verse. 13. 13, 12. He says to Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah tells him what he sees. And then God says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. Thou hast well seen. Ngambira neighbor, ola biechi. First ask your neighbor, what do you see? God can only say, You have seen well, if you have seen according to his word nothing else so if you still see trouble you have not yet aligned yourself to that god i pray you are here when the bible says in the book of mark mark 11 verse 20 let me show you something this tree jesus passed by the tree and the bible says that he wanted food he was hungry and then he did not find any fruit on the tree. And then he cast the tree, like in the morning. And that's it. He didn't check on it, and nothing happened. So while they were passing by in the morning, and then the Bible says, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. I like the version that says, and Peter, because it is always Peter. Give me the next verse. Next verse, please. And Peter, this is it, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, Behold, the fig tree which thou cast is withered away. Next verse. Next verse, please. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have, can we read together, have? Now, the original manuscript of this verse says, Have the faith of God. It doesn't really differ from, from this in understanding but it takes you on a different level. I want you to understand me. He's trying to show them. He's trying to help Peter understand that when I said it, I meant it. Follow me. When I said it, I meant it. I cast that tree in the morning and I knew that it is going to be cast. I don't need to go back and check. Are you with me? I don't need to come and check. I don't need to follow up your kitchen. I don't need to follow up your food. I don't need to follow up your rent. I say this is a season of God. I don't need to check everything. I don't need to check what is happening and what is not happening. The fact that I said it, endorsed it and stamped it, it is done. That is what he's trying to draw their attention to. That as long as I say something, I've finished. 
have finished saying it. Now our job is to move ourselves from the struggles in the natural so that we are able to see as God. We are able to have the faith of God. Because if God says, I'm going to prosper you today, he will prosper you today. Our problem is this. When we say, when God says, I'm going to prosper you today, let's say in the natural we have 24 hours. Then the, the human being, the carnal man, is going to be waiting in his five senses. Are you following? Then he says, Ngasi na chendaba. Then he says, Ngasi na chempulida. Then they start checking their phone every minute. By 9 a.m., they are calling, Musumba, Ngasi na chendaba. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know what? God said it is coming. It is coming. I don't care if it was 24, 24, 0, 0. He said it is coming. I'm going to wait for it until I see it. That is the man he's waiting for. The man that pulls himself out of the spiritual reality and takes himself and measures his, the outcome of God's word by what he sees has already moved from faith. He cannot get anything because everything that we are supposed to get, we get through that channel. He has said, let it be done according to your faith. Now that scripture says, have the faith of God. That if God says, today, this is what I'm going to do. He, before he says it, he has already finished it. He's not trying it. No, 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 locally. I take a day that this is a gold season. And every morning they are saying, God, direct my feet. I am looking for God. Where I step, I will eat. Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? That is a man that is aligned to the word of God. And that is the man God is looking for. God is looking for the man because he says something very clear. If you've understood this, you will understand the other. It is after this scripture that the Lord says, he says to them, you can speak to this mountain and you say, be thou removed and cast into the sea and it shall do. There is something he dies there. The Bible says, For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever say shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Read the next part. And shall. That is the part. Please read it loud. Do you know how many Christians, do you know how many born again, okay, believers, they like that part, that one. The part that says, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. The part that brings results is that little part that says, shall not doubt in his heart. That's where the results are. Because if you doubt, that means that you can still say, God, the money is coming. And then you think, mm. same man, you say, the money is coming. Then you say, mm. Then God, you believe, you say, God, I believe in, 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 the, in the presence of the Lord. Or you are saying, money is coming in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In your heart, your heart is, has a different conversation. Your heart is saying, Here there is a different discussion. Here there is a different discussion. He's trying to say that as long as there is another discussion behind somewhere, you have already closed the door to the reality of that thing happening. Touch somebody. Say, what do you see? Mugambe, mubuze, mugambe, wabo chalave visibu. Okay, let, let us stop the visibu now. So that by the time you leave this place, all you see is gold touch somebody say do you still see problems do you still see problems or do you see light do you see answers do you see God if you already see it I guarantee you today is too long you will receive the gold in the name of Jesus take me back to the scripture take me back thank you 
And the Bible says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. Do you see gold season? Are you sure you see gold season? Do you see the best of the land coming to you? Do you see luxury? Do you see expensive? Do you see rare? Do you see beautiful? Do you see splendor? If you see it in the name of Jesus Christ, let it perform the miracle you are waiting for in the name of Jesus. This is the point. The Lord is saying, the minute that I see a man who has grabbed my word and they are aligned to my word, I am going to release the answer. He says, I will hasten my word to perform it. Can you imagine? Look, gentlemen, please come and stand here. So the word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah. Okay, to push. And says, push. You have been in a challenging situation. I know. When you went through the fire, I saw. When you were in the storm, I saw. I have seen the challenge that you have gone through. But this word I'm giving you is your gateway into the place. And the answers to the prayers that you have been praying. So he says to push. Look, look at me. God does not have time to explain to you what it is he already knows. You know, push. Four years ago, this is what happened. How did you feel? You felt bad. Now, the finances are not there. How do you feel? No, no. He doesn't have that part. The word that he's going to give you, he has already compressed whatever it is you went through and the answers you are looking for and he releases a word to give you breakthrough. One word. So when that word comes to push, the word says, I've opened the doors of the city of God to you. I've given you access. And he says to you, now, from now, you shall be walking on the streets of God. I pray somebody's here. He says, push, from today, you will be walking on the streets of God. He does not go back to check on the word. It is your job and your responsibility to align yourself to the word that he has given you. And the earlier you do it, the better for you. Because if you have understood, there are always windows. God is not going to wait. If he says this is a season of God, and then you say, you, okay, slow space, uh, snail, snail pace. You start moving like this, or tortoise. You start saying, One or two kira wali, you might reach in December. Hmm? He's doing something else. He's a progressive God. And he works in windows. So you do what you are supposed to do at the time when you are supposed to do it. So let me show you what happens. The Lord comes back to push and ask push, what do you see? Focus on me. He does not ask you by a visitation. He will not ask you by a visitation. He will check what is happening in this thing. This thing. Our body, this is a body. This is a thing. Even if it is not there, God speaks. He's a spirit. This is just a vessel, a thing. Maybe we were supposed to be cups. Over you are in cup shape, over plate shape, doesn't matter. As long as God says you are flesh, you are a body. Listen. This is a body. Inside here is what we call a soul. When the spirit, when the Bible refers to the spirit of your mind, he's talking about the spirit that you have in your life. So the body is body, soul, spirit. That spirit that we talk about is in, is in the center of your mind. It is in the spirit of your mind. In the spirit, what your spirit has picked up. He's looking for the thing that you have placed in there. That is the interaction. When we say that the Spirit of the Lord interacts with us, it does not interact with our body. It does not interact with our mind. It interacts with the Spirit. 
So when he says, that means that when Jeremiah, when God asks Jeremiah, what do you see? No, he's not asking him out of a verbal conversation. He's not visiting him and checking. Push. Have you understood what I said? No. Have you yet understood what I said? No. No. The Lord looks in the spirit and waits for when push will align himself to this word and the minute that push aligns himself to this word the bible says i will hasten it to fulfill it i will quicken the results that you have to see i will make sure that it happens quickly and suddenly in the name of jesus when he says i will hasten it chitegeza look if it was a day that was given to you and at the minute it clocks nine in the morning, your mind has quickened it. Even if your answer is in a devil, it shall arrive at that minute. That is how the spirit of the Lord works. He will use every other thing important, every other thing available to make sure that you get the answer as long as you align yourself to the spirit. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? Do you already see what you are supposed to see? Do you already see yourself counting the money you are supposed to count? Do you already see yourself in the other house you want? Touch your neighbor. Say the other house. Not this one. The other one. You tell them. They will understand. Yes. Thank you, Push. Thank you. God is saying the minute that you align your mind, the minute that you see by the Spirit, this seeing we are talking about is not seeing with your eyes. At, cert, at, at a certain point, I, I've, I don't know. I prayed that if Christians didn't have natural eyes, maybe it would be best. Huh? Bad prayer. It's a good prayer. I know that, the, that, that your eyes, the faculty of your eyes is important in the natural. But let me show you. If you have been near a person who is physically blind, you will realize that they are different. In terms of their perception of things, you will realize that they are different. They will even notice something that is there, and yet they have no faculty of eyes to know that the thing is there. It means that there is an enlightenment that has come to them. That goes beyond the faculty of seeing. That is the enlightenment that the Lord is looking for. That is what God is looking for in you. That you are able to sense that today is not just any other day. Today is a day in the season that is a season of God. I will not open the day in a normal way. I will not carry out things I'm doing in a normal way. Yesterday was a different season. This is a season for people to give me God. So everyone I encounter, something must happen. If I know that this is a season of God, when I encounter you, my dear, at least I will carry you. I will do something because I know that God has promised to give me something with every encounter. I can't take it lightly. I cannot take it lightly. If I meet a man, I am not meeting a man. You have not understood. In this season, when the Lord allows me to meet somebody, I am not just meeting the person. They must give me an answer. They must open a door. They must touch their pockets. They must give me some money. They must give me some God. Because according to God's word, that is what is supposed to happen. Ah, I cannot have a casual encounter. What a neighbor. Or your neighbor go to dinner. Yow. Look, I don't want you to go beyond whatever it is I'm saying. Let me warn you before I say it. Don't just look at your neighbor. There must be something that your neighbor knows that you need. There must be something that your neighbor has access to that you don't have access to. The encounters don't happen by mistake in the season when God has said, I'm going to bless you. Where God says we are walking on streets of God. Every call that comes through, I will take it like the magical call. I will take it like the golden call. I need only one call for my life to turn around. I will not just look at calls as just calls. I will look at every call that I receive in that season as my golden call. 
That is a man that has understood what season they are in. When someone calls me, I keep telling you, pick up the phones. Some people be like, oh, yeah, manja. Oh, yeah, manja. Don't pick one. Don't pick two. Don't pick three. Manerenda one. Dirty two. I don't know. Then when the phone come, picks, he says, who is calling? Don't pick one. Don't pick. How do you know? Look, look, look. I want to pull you from it to, to another place. How do you know that don't pick this type is calling with good news? How? How do you know? Because the season has changed. Unless you are thinking in the natural, you are still aligned to what is natural. But if you are aligned to the word of the Lord, it might be that the money lender too is calling to say, my dear, please forget the, the, the money. Forget it. We can remain friends. But you refuse to pick the call because you are not aligned to the thing that the Lord is doing in that season. Touch somebody. Muwe high five. Mugambe. No money lenders this season. No money lenders. No money lenders. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me? You align yourself completely to what God is doing. And you refuse anything that is out of that realm. Refuse it. Refuse it. If you believe God and you believe that he says I'm walking on the streets of God, I cannot be walking in anything less than streets of God. If I see that my step wants to go where there are no streets of God, I change the step. You have not understood. Ngambina neighbor, if you turn this side and you see that you are going into Ronnie's, say Ronnie's direction, and Ron is not taking you to sweet so gold. Please don't step. Step this side. You have understood. Uh, don't be like, uh huh. Let me go into Ronnie's direction. Then somehow streets of gold will appear. They will not appear. You will have left them the other side. You go by the direction of the Lord. I hope you remember that the Lord has said we walk at his pace, not at any other man's pace. So if we are walking like that, anything that is not going where God is going, please don't take your legs there. You have been anointed to take the good of the land. Your feet have been anointed. Touch somebody, say my feet have been anointed to receive God. Wherever you go, you are supposed to receive God. That is the thing. So the minute that you align yourself, align yourself at that level. Ngambina neighbor, take every call serious. Take every encounter serious. This is the season. That Bible says, that is, well, well, there are simple things in the scripture that I've seen. And the minute that I saw the thing, I was like, oh my God, this is a real thing. Because for a long time, I knew that Job got restoration. Double restoration. He lost everything. He got everything double. But that's as far as I knew. I think when I was reading, I was just reading. Until I found the place where it says, Hey, every man that he met. Huh? Every man. Not some men. Look at me. Every man. Do you know what can happen to you in a day? If every man you meet... How many are these? How many people are seated here? Haven't you met them? The, the, the scripture says every man that he met from morning, every man that he met gave him a little money and a little gold. In 24 hours, how much gold can you have? How much money can you have? May this same anointing appear to you in the name of Jesus. Let every man that sees you give you a little money and a little gold. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Whoa! Do you know there are things that are coined in scripture? You need a seeing eye to see. The Bible says, Esther 2.15, that everyone that saw Esther, 
Oh my God. Every person, you people, look at me. Is it possible? It is in scripture. Is it possible that every person that sees you favors you? Every. I'm not saying some. I'm not saying the majority of them. I'm saying every. The Ascari favors you. The receptionist favors you. The boss favors you. The HR favors you. The CEO favors you. The king favors you. The director of the company favors you. May this be your portion, somebody. Wow! Somebody shout, I'm walking on the streets of God. This is the level. If you align what you see to that, you are going to get the results of them. You will get the actual result. I don't know how they say favor. Favor me. Mugabe, you just say what I've said. I don't know how to say. Bulimuntu what? Favor me. Over favors me. Whatever it is, Checho. Mugambe Bulimuntu. After this minute, may every man you encounter favor you in the name of Jesus. Wow! That is the reality of you walking on the streets of God. The people you've never seen and the people you've seen, the people you know, the people you don't know, it will be as if they know you. God, I don't know if you understand me. Have you ever gone to an office where you have no person? You don't know anybody. And then you arrive. It is like the scary was already told that you are coming. He leaves his seat. He carries you. He says, I'll take you to the office. As though he leaves the other place unmanned. He leaves no one in that desk. It is as though you are his assignment. And then you go there. He takes you and knocks and says, you know what? Receptionist, this person has come to meet this person. Is that person there? No. That person is still in a meeting. Okay, please wait. And then the man goes. And then he comes back. Have you seen the person? Have you seen these things happen? That is what is going to happen to you. You have entered another place. People will stop working to work on you. If you are waiting for visa, let every other person's visa wait until you get yours in the name of Jesus. I guarantee you until you get yours. You will be the priority every day and every day. The minute they say we are sending stamp, yours will come first in the name of Jesus. That is the reality of walking on streets of God. Somebody shout! Can you imagine a man obtains favor in front of every person that sees them? Let me close with this. Acts chapter 3. Best part. Every time I, read, I mention this scripture, I keep saying I am not like Peter. So Peter says to the man that is crippled, he said, silver and gold, I have none. That is what he said. But I want you to see something. Look, look, look. The man was looking for something. Give him a coin. Give him money. Give him something. He was just a beggar. He had a bigger problem than begging. Do you realize that? We go back to where we started. Peter realized that the answer, he wanted to give this man a permanent answer. He did not want to give him money for lunch, for drink, for what? No. Because that means he would find him there the next day. Do you understand why the Lord sends you to a prophet? Do you now understand? It is not about the rent. The rent will be sorted. But we must take you to the place of your destiny. That is what matters. So the Bible says that Peter meets the man. And then Peter meets the man with John and whoever. And the Bible says, please take it back. Silver and gold have I none. When the man is begging, focus on me. When you find a beggar on the street, do you really think they're asking you for silver or gold? He was talking about the reality of the spirit. 
that I have accessed some things. In other words, he's saying, I have accessed some things in the spirit. They have been given to me, I can release. But this level, I have not reached. He was trying to speak about a spiritual reality. He was trying to say, if I had received already silver and gold, I would have given it to you and you would never be in this situation again. Now can I tell you, I am not like Peter. I am going to release silver and gold because according to that reality, it has been granted me. God, I pray you understand what I'm saying. There are levels in the spirit. Every level you go to, you are granted access to things as a custodian. So this is what Peter was talking about. But he says, silver and gold I have none. But God cannot say this is the city of gold. And there is no gold in the city. There is gold where you are seated. There is gold tonight where you are seated. He cannot say, I open the doors into the city of God and there is no gold in that place. He has already explained to us that the gold is like a gold mine and everywhere you press out of that pressure, the abundance is going to come to you. So in the name of Jesus, as I prophesy to you, let the doors open for you to receive silver and gold. May every man's eye, may every man you encounter, may you be favored before them. May every man work for your good. May people hand you money. May people hand you God. Let this be the true season where you walk on the streets of God. Whatever is lacking, I can man that it is made right now whatever is a limitation is removed right now in the name of Jesus I command you to receive God in the name of Jesus somebody celebrate hallelujah a man can only give you what they have so every translation of God is going to be available to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every reality of God. Touch somebody say, gold, gold, gold. If you have planted gold here, in the name of Jesus, you are going to see God immediately in the name of the Lord. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll give you a moment to speak with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to God. Let it be that you align your mind to what it is the Lord is doing. That he may hasten, that he may quicken, that he may release speed over everything that it may be able to manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord wants to do in this season. Please align your mind to it. Let it be that your eyes, your eyes are able to see the opportunity where you are supposed to be. What you are supposed to do. Ask God for special grace. Ask God to grant you the grace. That there may be no doubt found in this word. That as the Lord has given you word. He may be able to check. And when he checks. He checks and you are aligned. That immediately he may be able to release the answer that you are looking for. This will be the day where you get your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak to the Lord somebody. Speak to the Lord now. Don't speak about the things you don't want. Speak about the word that the Lord has given you. That is where the power is. Speak to him about that. Speak to him about its reality. Speak to him about the power that rests on the inside. Somebody speak to the Lord. The power of the Lord is available. It is available to quicken everyone. To quicken the manifestation of your answer. This is the point where you align yourself. This is the point where you ask God. Allow my eyes to see. Let me see gold. Let me see the gold you're talking about. Let me be able to see this gold. Allow me the gold. The Bible says of David. Open my eyes, he says. Open my eyes. That I may be able to behold wondrous things in your law. What is it that is in this word? Why are you saying that we've entered the city of God? Why are you saying we are walking on the streets of God? I might be measuring it according to what is around me. I might be measuring it according to my pocket. But there is a reality that you want me to pick. 
please give me the eyes to see that there is gold where I am. That there is gold in my journey. That there is gold in every encounter. That there is gold that you have already prepared for me. That I may not miss. That I may not miss the reality of this word. Spirit of the living God. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. You are God and there is no other. Speak to us, Jesus. Make yourself manifest. Make yourself manifest. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, now is your time. Do us according to you. Do us your word. Oh, yana samakashata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come meet God and receive instant direction from Him. Come meet God and receive instant direction from Him. Go beyond the confines of life and see scripture fulfilled in your life by experiencing the epitome of knowledge from the custodian of God's sake. He has said He has taken us into the good of the land that means he's trying to break it down for us to understand that everything in that land is good someone said the gold of the land where god has taken you is good touch somebody say you have arrived it is the truth People may not like it. They will be saying, how did you get there? How did you travel? How did you buy that car? How did you buy that house? How did you get married? You arrived. There is nothing to debate about. The Lord has brought it to a good finish. So the Lord's dealings with us will always be about places. Because he has saved and kept and reserved something for you in that place. The place that you call your good land is not my good land. Someone's prayer will be a prayer for breakthrough in ministry. And there is another one who says, God, I want to travel. None of them is wrong. Just that the place that we desire is different. He says, I go and I prepare a place. And then after I prepare the place, I, someone say, I come. A lot of believers think that they are waiting for the second coming of Christ. This is not what he's talking about. So when he says, I will come, it means he will signal you at the level of your discernment, whether in a dream, whether in a vision, whether through the mouthpiece of a prophet, he will say, I've come to open the doors to the place I prepared for you. I've come to open the doors into the good land. Can I prophesy to a man today? The doors of the good land open up to you in the name of Jesus. He's saying the land where you have come is not the land where you have been. The land where you have been operates on the currency of shillings. The land where I'm taking you operates on God. He's saying whatever it is you have tested, that is good. But this one is the best. You have tested the goodness of the Lord. You are about to taste the best of the Lord. He has upgraded you in every manner. This is your moment of spiritual enlightenment right here on Press TV. Ah, the problem is not that the, the word of the Lord lacks power. No, our problem is our capacity to actually receive the word. That is our problem. Because you failed yesterday and the other day and the other day. doesn't make you a failure. Uh -uh, the things didn't work then there is a time when whatever fishing you do the entire night and the entire day doesn't work until the Lord shows up until the prophet shows up but when the prophet comes he comes with the word and the word is enough he says cast your net on the other side where were the fish before the fish were there they were waiting for a command they were waiting for a word now in the name of Jesus let every net that you have in your hands catch fish in the name of Jesus and may it be so huge that it breaks the net in Jesus' name neighbor, after today your wallet is going to receive so much money so much gold that it will be tearing ah! it 
you are one that desires to speak one-on-one -on -one for direction, instruction, or spiritual guidance, Icon Church is the place. Open every day, Monday to Friday, 5 p.m., Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Catered in Chirica, Kamuli Road, opposite Mogas Petro Station. And more information concerning Icon Church, please reach us on plus 256-703-792-185.